This program is brought to you by the Genesis Communications Network, a world leader in talk radio since 1998. Visit GCNlive.com today. Broadcasting and streaming live all across America. This is Home Talk USA with Michael King, where we will discuss topics pertaining to your home with industry leading experts. Michael King is a licensed general contractor with more than 30 years of experience in home improvements and the author of Contracting with the King. Join us this hour for our segment, Invent America, with your co-host, the inventor lady, Rita Crompton. Discover what's next in the home improvement industry and explore new products and innovations. Or if you have that next great big idea, learn what it takes to bring your invention to the world as Michael King and Rita Crompton talk to America's inventors and innovators. Remember, the America of tomorrow is being invented today. We invite you to visit us at HomeTalkUSA.com. One of the best resources for home improvement information around today. Your best life begins with your best home. And there's no place like Home Talk. That's HomeTalkUSA.com. And now, we proudly present Invent America from the number one home improvement radio program in the country, Home Talk USA, with your host, the Cajun contractor, Michael King, and his co-host, the inventor lady, Rita Crompton. All right, welcome America. That's right. Welcome to Home Talk USA right here on the Genesis Communication Radio Network at GCNlive.com. This is the Invent America Show, part of the Home Talk USA family, where we talk about the, well, basically the products of the future here on this show and uh, the young um, developers and manufacturers and entrepreneurs and uh that's trying to bring these products to market. Hey, we're just trying to help them. And I'd like to welcome my co-host, uh, the inventor lady herself, Miss Rita Crompton. Hey, Rita, how's well? How been your week? <laughs> It's still Monday. It's just getting started. So, you know, the the week that leads up to you know our show on Saturday are always so busy. It just amazes me how fast, you know, the Saturday rolls around for the show and we're busy, you know, Monday through Friday getting it lined up, which is really exciting because, you know, we've got so many different topics and inventors out there um, who listen to the show and they're able to go back and look on our in our archives and say, okay, I need this topic now. And what we're providing to them is exactly what they need, is good information when they need it, and it's free. And, and not only it's free, but you break it down so eloquently. It's like it's this big puzzle. You have all these pieces all over the place. It's confusing. Uh, some of the pieces look the same. It takes a long time to try to put it into the puzzle. But at the end of the day, you got to sit back, take all your pieces, and then eventually if you listen to this show, then you can start putting these pieces of the puzzle to make the puzzle make sense and be completed. And what I mean by completed is, hey, it's ready to go to market. <laughs> Does that make sense? Absolutely. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do an analogy Every here. Every time you know? I talk to someone, they give me an idea for another show. Because yeah. they're sharing then their, their, the, the challenges that they've had. And so between our inventors who, you know, have solved problems, you know, we're able to help the new inventors – and then our service providers, our sponsors, you know, they tell us what they need and what they're looking for. And it's it's a wonderful combination of, you know, information that we are able to provide to all of the inventors out there who haven't taken the first step or in the early stages. And it's great because the, the experienced inventors help the new inventors. So That's we're right. able to just, you know, get the information out there to them. And it's hard. It's a hard path. Well, what I want to do next week, uh, write this down. What I want to do next week is in uh, the first segment where we talk about the show, the upcoming show, uh, What uh, I wanted you to take uh, a time uh, for, for our sponsors of Invent America, and I want to give them a big shout-out next week. And let's do explain to our audience next week about our sponsors and the products that they offer. Let's do that next week, okay? Okay. All right. That sounds good. 
was good. Um, we've got some great sponsors, so I'm sure that they will appreciate that, um, that you know, stand up and hurrah. Yeah, I want to do that next week. But, uh, hey, tell us about the show this week, though. Well, the show today, we had a gentleman, one of our friends from the north, all right, had said that, you know, I filed a patent in the U.S. He filed in Canada, and he filed in the U.S. And so we were talking then, you know, some about the strategies of, you know, why you file um, internationally in different countries. So, you know, I thought it would be a really good time for us to talk about, you know, those strategies because there, there's a couple of kind of things that will encourage someone to copy your invention. One is that you can't fill orders, and the other one is you can't fill the orders at a price the consumer is willing to pay for them. So it gives someone incentive to, you know, infringe on your patent. Um, yeah. But there are strategies that go into that that make it more of an issue that you look at say, all right, so this gentleman, he knows that the U.S. is going to be his major market, even though he lives in Canada. So he filed here. You know, some people say, well, I know I'm going to be manufacturing in Mexico, so I'm going to file there. You don't file in every country, um, but you look at the strategy of why you're filing in different yeah. places. And years ago, I had a, a, a two gentlemen, they were partners, they filed in the U.S., because that's where they lived, and they filed in the EU. Spain became their major country of selling. They packed up their families and moved. But if they hadn't filed internationally, they would have lost that opportunity. Wow, I didn't realize that. That could happen, so, huh? Wow. Yeah, very, very interesting. And, and you know... Sometimes by the time an inventor gets to the point of, well, I filed my, my non-provisional in the U.S., um, and they're talking to their attorney, and their attorney says, oh, billable time. You know, if you file internationally, you know, it's going to be tens of thousands of dollars. Eh, that's not exactly true. What they see is billable time, and, you know, if you're being frugal, there are certainly better ways to deal with that. Yeah, that's a, that's a real good point, real good point. And so today we are going to be talking to our friend from the north, um, Daniel Shurak. Um, he has got a very cool product. And then we're going to be talking to Tim Hewlett. He's U.S.-based, but his product is going to have major applications internationally. So he filed internationally. And then we've got um, one of our registered patent attorneys who's going to be on, who's going to be talking about, you know, some of those strategies and, and why you would file, you know, say, not worry about it. Um, or you say, no, I think I need to at least consider it. You know, it's one thing that I tell an inventor. It's like I was talking to another lady. It's like, have you filed internationally? And she said, she said, no, and I go, there's a time frame. It's one thing for them to say, I've considered it, and I decided no. Or it's like, are you kidding me? I missed it two months ago. And, and you're right. The copyright laws, um, patent laws are different um, internationally than, than what they are in the United States. So you need to check your uh, international domicile to find out what is the law. And that's why you listen to this show, right? <laughs> that's right. That is right. You know, it's like in the U.S., you know, if you miss a filing date, you can generally pay enough money to buy your way out of it with the USPTO. The international dates are firm. They are written in stone. You cannot buy your way out of it. And so for a lot of inventors, they, they don't realize that if they miss that date and they didn't know about it, um, they may have made different business decisions if they had known about it. Yeah. Wow. So that's what we look at is giving them the information so that they can make the business decision that's best for them. Well, Rita. This is for everybody. Well, we got to pay some bills, Rita, and you know what that's about now, right? I do, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, you was a guest for years, and hey, you, you're actually putting this show together, so now you realize that. Wow, well, it's a little bit more in detail. Try to put one of these radio shows together and come up with uh, a weekly content. But, hey, stay tuned right here. We're going to be right back with our first guest, first topic, along with the Inventor Lady herself, my sidekick. This is the Invent America Show on the Home Talk USA Radio Network. Yay! I'll come back now, you yeah?
Talk USA with Michael King. Do you have questions about your next home improvement project or home repairs? Now you can chat with verified home repair and home improvement experts in just minutes. Get the help you need by visiting HomeTalkUSA.com, one of the best resources for home improvement information around today. Your best life begins with your best home, and there's no place like Home Talk. That's HomeTalkUSA.com. And now, back to Invent America from the number one home improvement radio program in the country. Home Talk USA with your host, the Cajun contractor, Michael King, and his co-host, the inventor lady, Rita Crompton. Yay! Welcome back. That's right. This is the Invent America show, part of the Home Talk USA radio network. Uh, Rita, I'll tell you, we got a jam-packed show, and let's just get right into it. Who's our first guest? Our first guest today is Daniel, and Daniel, if I say this wrong, I am really sorry, Syriac. Um, he is the inventor of Expandy, and Daniel lives in Canada. He is one of our friends to the north, um, experience in aerospace and medical devices, has several different products out there, everything from hand tools and uh, motorcycle accessories to his newest one, which is a space-saving piece of furniture. So, Daniel, thank you so much for being with us today. And, you know, one of the things that we're talking about is, you know, you live in Canada, you filed there, but you also filed in the U.S. So tell everybody what Expandy is, um, because it's very cool. And um, then I'll ask you some more questions. Yes, hi, Rita. Thanks for having me. Uh, Yes, I'm in Canada, and I have many ideas, but this is the closest I've been to bring it to the market, it's a new space-saving idea that transforms an armchair into a love seat and then into a sofa, and everything is contained inside. So, can, can so you for me? our audience listener, it's like a dining room table that expands, and you add, you know, in in this case, it, it expands out, and you would have to add the, the the pieces to it. But yours is all self-contained, which is really amazing. Yes, I was frustrated by the space taken by the sofa, but I saw that there is a lot of space inside the sofa. So I actually designed uh, all the mechanisms and the storage space to have everything included inside. So you don't need extra storage space. You have everything in the armchair. You don't need any tools, and it takes 30 seconds to actually expand or retract. That is amazing. We can't wait to see it. Um, so you live in Canada. You filed there, but you also filed in the U.S. Explain to our listeners, because this is what we're trying to share, is that value of the international filings. Why did you file in the U.S.? Yes. So first, U.S. is the biggest market, especially for furniture. And the patent protects your idea in the country where the patent is granted. So in order to protect my idea in the United States, I had to file a patent for the United States. But I also apply in Canada, and I'm patent pending in Europe, especially because the functionality that I designed, it's uh, made for small spaces, for condos, for tiny homes, for kids' room, everywhere where you need space, but also comfortable seating. Right. It makes a difference when you think about all the different places where you could use something like that. Um, You know, you've got a hospital room now where someone's sitting there, but they decide that, you know, their loved one is going to be, you know, admitted to the hospital. So now that they can expand it, they could actually sleep on the sofa. Yes. So this is just the first product, and I have a manufacturing in Europe with great quality. We are going to show it to high point markets in the state. Uh, October 14 to 18, but it's uh, very, uh, this is first product. I'm looking also to expand to multiple products that use this functionality because there is nothing like that from what I've seen. You have a sofa that transforms into a bed, but I don't have guests that sleep overnight. I want to have friends to have a chat on the evening to watch a game. So this actually gives me the comfortable seating that I need and then I can have my space back in 30 seconds. The guests don't even reach the car, and then I have the space back. 
Yeah, I mean, that makes so much sense. If you're in a, you know, a, an office and now all of a sudden you've got three people show up for a meeting, you can expand the seating space. If you're in a college room or, like you said, a tiny home, there's a lot of places that you would be able to use this um, expandable furniture. And, you, and, and it makes so much sense, especially where, you know, we've got so many living spaces now that are, are condensing um, and getting smaller. So what is your next step? You said you're going to a show. What show are you going to, and where is it? It's High Point Market Show. It's, I think, the capital of furniture. It's my first time being there, and I'm very excited because this is totally not my specialty furniture, but I'll be there to present my idea with the manufacturer. It's uh, Istikbao. It's a, co- a Turkish company, one of the biggest manufacturers in Europe. And then we're going to present it and bring it to the market. So we are looking to retailers that are interested in this to actually uh, place some orders and bring it to people that they need this because we need to show that there is a new option. This option doesn't exist. It's totally new. So is your goal then to set up manufacturing yourself or is it to license it to one of the existing furniture companies? Well, I have multiple ways. I'm actually looking to bring in to as many people as possible, and this could be licensing. Uh, this is manufacturing because I have a manufacturer that actually made this prototype, and it's ready for production right now. So they're ready to take orders and uh, bring it to people. Excellent. Uh, you know, I I think it's it's wonderful that, you know, you've got a variety of experiences. Not every inventor does. And so for them, they, you know, I need to license this because I can't really go into the the startup mode of manufacturing myself. Um, You've got a a good, broad experience. And so tell our inventors a little bit about, you know, some of the experience that you've had. Well, I started with this uh, idea for furniture in 2015. And it wasn't easy. I didn't have any contact. I didn't have any knowledge. I had zero experience in furniture. But I had this crazy idea of, hey, I can take this and expand it. So I built a prototype in my garage. I actually, I had a company, also a company interested in, and they built, but they couldn't sell it because it's something so new that uh, some people were afraid that uh, they cannot sell it because nobody knows about it. And then I had a company in California that licensed this idea but they they couldn't bring it to the market because they couldn't market it well. So I'm Daniel, so now I'm trying to yes. Yeah. Yes, well, you hear the music going. We have got to go and pay some bills and thank our Genesis Communication Network so much. Great. So, Daniel, Great. thank you, and we will get pictures thank of you. your product up there. Thank you. Yes. So the, the website is expanding with an eye furniture. Okay. Thank you.